Welcome to our lesson study online. This week we are studying lesson 2, April 4 to 10, the origin and nature of the Bible. And tonight we are studying the written word of God. I'd like to show you thus far what we have studied from Sunday, Monday, and connect it with our lesson topic tonight. Last Sunday we studied God who revealed the contents of the Bible to the prophets in that process we said is revelation and then last Monday we studied the prophets being moved by the Holy Spirit of God to write the message and we call that from prophets to the written word inspiration tonight we're studying the product of revelation and inspiration shall we bow our heads for prayer Father in heaven now we invite you to assist us in the study of your word that we may find messages for us relevant to our time be strengthened by it and look forward to the time when you yourself will teach us your word all throughout eternity we pray in jesus name amen so here just a simple recap revelation and inspiration have been discussed in previous study tonight we focus on the product none other than the written word of god we are provided in the lesson study guide advantages of written communication. I did a little search and found more advantages and I copied it, borrowed it from the business communication. It's there at the footnote and everything that has been presented in the study guide are all here. So there are 15 advantages and there are more. I will not explain. I'll just read each of them because I will go to the most important aspect of the study tonight. The rest of the text, I encourage you to read it for yourself, for your growth. Number one advantage of written communication is easy to preserve. So until now, the writings of the prophets are still in our hands because it's written. Easy presentation of complex matter. You know, the Word of God contains complex concepts, but it would be easier if we follow certain rules. Permanent record. Yes, written communication serves as permanent. Prevention of waste of time and money. Accurate presentation use as a reference. Delegation of authority. See, instead of the person presenting the words orally, it should be the written document. Longevity, in other words, it lasts longer. Effective communication, maintaining image. You see, the written message of God maintains the image of God as a loving and merciful God. Proper information, less distortion possibility, and no opportunity to misinterpret. And that's the reason why we're studying hermeneutics this quarter. Controlling tool easy to verify if that is a written document. Okay, so these are self-explanatory. I hope you take note of that advantage and that we now go to the most important word that I want to share with you tonight. So let's go to the text Exodus 34, 27. In close parenthesis, I put there actually verse 10 because that phrase have been mentioned in verse 10 earlier. Okay, and then I put also there verses 12 and 15. I will explain that a little. And the word of the Lord says, And the Lord said to Moses, Write these words, for in accordance with these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. Let me give you brief description of the whole chapter. You notice that earlier in the chapter, God called Moses at Mount Sinai, and he stayed there for several weeks, and God gave him the Ten Commandments. When he came down, he saw his people have sinned against the Lord. In his anger, he threw the two tables of stones, the Ten Commandments, and it was broken down. Okay? And so Moses was asked to go back to the mountain, and the Lord has made a second copy of the Ten Commandments, and that is Exodus 34. Okay? And so according to what the Lord has spoken, he was instructed to write those words because according to those words, God made a covenant with Israel. Now, we are interested of the word covenant. What does that old word covenant mean? You know, young people today does not understand that. Okay, so what we will do tonight is I will lead you into a word study and then we will see richer meaning of the word covenant. So here, uh, this comes from Brown Drivers Briggs and Strong Dictionary, Biblical Dictionary. I like this because it says that the word covenant or alliance or pledge in that 
what is the you see here the the original word there it is pronounced berate okay the transliteration and the phonetics you know one thing good with the technology is that you can click the button there the audio and you will hear how the word is pronounced so you are, so that you will not be mistaken ah this is how it is pronounced okay and there, the meaning there is very very rich according to this lexicon biblical lexicon or dictionary the word covenant also mean constitution ordinance from a monarch or king to the subjects so here god was telling moses to write his words because his words that come out of his mouth are law or laws or constitution or ordinance if you go to the to the hierarchies of laws we found out and i borrowed it from michael clegg et al 2016 in his document the hierarchy of laws according to experts the highest ranking law in the land in any land or any country generally is the so-called constitutional law or constitution in short that is the most supreme law if we rank law in important okay and out of the constitution law making bodies would make or legislate another law or laws from the constitution in that law taken derived from constitution is called statutory laws or legislation which includes according to the author treaties international international obligations executive orders or eo and presidential decrees or pd case laws and common laws and below when these statutory laws below to that laws are regulations and then the basic there is um procedures and code of conduct that is where the ordinances comes when the statutory laws republic of and regulations are implemented in the local government is called ordinance. So you will see there, the highest is constitution, okay? And below, the implementing actually the ordinance. You see, always not our topic anymore, you will see the uniqueness of the Bible. The word of God spoken by the king of kings. See, you know, in olden times, when the king speaks, his words are lost and he himself cannot change his law, you see. So we should regard the Bible, which is said to be the covenant of the king of kings to the Israel is actually a constitution of God's people. The basic, the fundamental principles are there in which the government, the state must adhere to, you see. So here, the written word of God serves as the constitution of God's people and therefore we should regard this with the supreme utmost respect because this that is the highest form of law that would govern a country or of state. According to Peter Acts 5.29 But Peter and the apostles answered We must obey God rather than men. You know this is very important when when laws of the land like constitution, statutory laws, regulations, and ordinances when these laws made by man contradict or go against the written word of God, we are provided here a guideline. What shall we do? Two conflicting laws, laws of man and laws of God. Well, here the Bible gives us what to do. Here is very clear, we need to subscribe to the highest value. When two colliding values collide, then we subscribe to the highest value. So here, God's word, I like give you example here, attending congregation worship versus preserving life by quarantine. So here when the laws of men like constitution, statutes, republic act 11469, the quarantine law, regulations, ordinances etc. contradict with the written word of God, we subscribe or choose to obey the highest value. And two examples here, which one do you think has the highest value? Attending congregational worship, we go there every Saturday to the church, or versus preserving life by quarantine stay home see what is important according to the teachings of the bible is preserving life you see this republic act therefore 11469 does not contradict with the written word of god it harmonizes the written word of god which says thou shalt not kill in other words preserve life so the government has instituted laws and policies to preserve our life from being infected of the covid 19 and so the church has mandated us to stay home 
cooperate with the laws of the land because this is for our own good. It is in harmony with the written word of God. See, we are not prohibited by this law to stop worshiping. No. What is being prohibited is coming together there because we might be infected if we come closer. So there is that social distancing element. So I hope I answer that issue here. This is not persecution. This is in harmony with the written word of God. Now, let's go to reflection and tutorial. And I quote Review and Herald, October 9, 1883, 625. According to the author, Ellen White, we must not be satisfied with superficial knowledge, but seek to learn the full meaning of the words of truth. Full meaning of the words of truth. And to drink deep of the spirit of the holy oracles or laws of God. So we are admonished to drink deep into the word. How shall we do that? We must not be satisfied with casual reading of the Bible. It does not do any good. You see, when you read it once, not good. But here tonight, I'm showing you, I will give you a very simple tutorial in which we can do deep study of God's word. You remember last Friday, I provided you materials that you should secure. But if you don't have money, if you have not secured and you have internet, we can do simple tutorial tonight. The idea is that the written word of God has a advantage because we can do simple word study or linguistic approach of Bible study. And so here, let me show you. You can go to the internet, go to Google. You are uh, Tagalog speaking Filipino. They pronounce it Google. The Cebuano speaking Filipino pronounce it Google. Cultural differences, you see. But doesn't matter. Go to Google and then type there in the box, lexicon of Exodus 34-27 or whatever text you are studying, if you are preparing for sermon or printed presentations, if you want to really go deeper into the original word of God, you can use the internet, type the lexicon of the text, and then click or enter, and then you are provided with options there. In this instance, I will go to Strong, that is a reliable, authoritative dictionary of the Bible. So it says there is Strong's Old Testament Hebrew lexicon. If you click that, it will give you this, okay? And that's what I have quoted tonight. I like this because in strong dictionary or lexical dictionary, it provides so many shades of meaning. Very rich that when you read the passage again with all those meanings, oh, you will see how rich is God's word. And one thing good with internet is that it provides you there the button for audio. So when you click that audio button, you will hear the word, how the word is pronounced. So the word covenant in Hebrew language is berit. So berit simply means what we have discussed. One meaning that is the constitution, the highest form of law in the land because that has been uttered, given not just by the king, not just by the president, but he's given by the king of kings and by the creator himself. And therefore, everyone should follow and obey it. So tonight on the reflection, I'd like to give you a simple tutorial there. And I hope it will help you in your practical Bible study. Um, Just go to Google, type the word there, licks second and then followed by the verse you're studying and it provides you all the meaning there. I hope this presentation on the written word of God would help you enhance your understanding of God's message for his people in these last days. Shall we our heads. Father in heaven, dear Lord, thank you for the inspiration of the Spirit tonight. We hope that we can do some practical things to improve our understanding of the written word. Thank you for all these advantages you have given to us. May we spend time, dear Lord, into your word that we may enrich our understanding of your word, appreciate its relevance to our time, that our faith may be strengthened, our character may be purified. It will make us ready for your coming. Bless one in all, we pray in Jesus. <coughs>